In this video, I show you how to install the SKR 1.3 mainboard with TMC 2209's depot drivers and sensorless homing into an ANIT 8 or AM8 and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. Our mission is to help 1 million people getting more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and enable bell notifications so you don't miss anything. Not long ago, I converted one of my ANIT A8s into an AM8 with metal frame, but if you're still on the original plastic frame, you can still do this SKR 1.3 upgrade. Technically, it's the same steps, except you will need a different mount for the mainboard for your frame. I've linked different mainboard mount options in the description of this video, so you have some choice. Today, I'm going to upgrade this AM8's mainboard to a 32-bit SKR 1.3 with TMC 2209's depot drivers. And I'm also setting my X and Y axis to use sensorless homing, so I don't need these end stop switches anymore. I'm going to talk about the SKR 1.4 in a future video so you will then see how that installation might be different. The main components used in this video are gonna be a 3D printed mounting frame for the electronics, the Big Tree Tech SKR 1.3 mainboard, a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint, this is of course optional and can be added later, two MOSFETs for the heat bed and hot end. I would actually recommend at least to use a MOSFET for the heat bed. I'm using also one on the hot end. At least four TMC2209 stepper drivers, a 120 millimeter fan for cooling the electronics mounted on another 3D printed frame that gets attached on top of the electronics mounting frame. This fan is a 12 volt fan and since my frame runs on 24 volts, I'm also using a buck converter to regulate the voltage for that fan down to 12 volt or less. Let's walk through the installation step by step. First of course I need to remove the existing electronics holder from the printer. So I remove all the connections first and then disassemble everything attached to the frame. Then I take the new electronics frame and fix the two MOSFETs to it. These need to be mounted before the mainboard. It's more convenient to reach the counter nuts from the backside. Now let's have a look at the SKR 1.3 mainboard. The first thing that I made sure is that this red jumper in the middle of the board is set to internal power, not to power from USB. I'm using a Raspberry Pi later to connect to the mainboard and I don't want to power the SKR mainboard from the Raspberry Pi, which otherwise could cause an under voltage issue on the Raspberry Pi. Here at the top, we have the sockets for the stepper drivers and there is four jumpers in each socket. I'm first removing all jumpers from the stepper driver sockets to start from scratch. And then I'm also removing these five red jumpers here on the right hand side, which configure sensorless homing for each driver. Sensorless homing is a feature that is supported by the TMC2209 stepper drivers, but there's also other models that support this, like the TMC2130, for example. I'm configuring the TMC2209 stepper drivers to run in UART mode for this. There is a red marked jumper position for every stepper driver that needs to be set if you like to use UART mode on it. I'm doing this for all four stepper drivers that I'm using in this build. And then to enable sensorless homing for the X and Y axis, I need to install two jumpers on the most left jumper connectors here, where I removed the other ones in the beginning. All jumpers are set, it's time to install the stepper drivers. The ground pin labeled with GND needs to be top right. In the case of the TMC2209, the potentiometer will be on the left hand side. And now carefully push the stepper driver into its slot. I'm doing this for the other ones in the exact same way. And because stepper drivers emit quite some heat, I'm also installing the provided heat sinks on top of each stepper driver. Now I have a fifth stepper driver slot left that I could use to drive the second Z-axis motor from a separate stepper driver. But I'm choosing to use a parallel connection adapter that has one input block and two output blocks so I can run my Z-axis motors from one stepper driver. And now it's time to mount the SKR mainboard to the mainboard frame. On the backside, there is still plenty of room for an optional Raspberry Pi. I'm going to install it to run Octoprint from it and a camera to monitor my prints. So this electronics frame looks great, very clean and ready to be installed on the AM8. The installation is rather simple. I only need three screws and three T-nuts which fits into the metal frame slots. And then just a few turns with the hex wrench and it's fixed. 
And though it looks like the electronics on the back extend into the build area, there is actually enough space left to fit a hand in between. Finally, the frame needs a little more fixing on the other side, so it wobbles less. Therefore, I used only one additional screw and a T-nut, which is absolutely enough to make it really sturdy. Next, I'm installing the power cables, starting with the MOSFETs, which have a separate power cable coming from the power supply. With a second pair of cables, I'm distributing power to the second MOSFET. Then I connect the hot end power cables to the upper MOSFET and the heat bed power cables to the lower MOSFET. The mainboard on the other side has its own power cables coming from the power supply. Now I'm starting to install the stepper motor cables. First I'm connecting the Z-axis duplicator and then connecting the Z-axis motors to it. Then the X and Y motors follow as well as the extruder motor. I had to exchange the old 3-pin plugs for the hot end and heat bed temperature sensors with DuPont connectors because the SKR 1.3 only has 2-pin connectors for those. There's three connectors on the SKR 1.3 for temperature sensors here in the lower right corner of the mainboard. I connect the heat bed sensor to the right plug and the hot end sensor to the middle one. I'm not using the X and Y end stop switches anymore, so they are left unconnected. The Z end stop switch, however, still needs to be connected. In this video, I'm going to use the original switch that came with the ANIT A8. If you want to know how to connect other probes like these, including the BL touch on the SKR 1.3, Watch out for another video that I'm going to do just covering these sensors in a bit. You will need to modify the existing ANET A8 end stop plug to work with the SKR 1.3. Originally the cables are on the first and third pin and for the SKR 1.3 we need to change the pins to be on the first and middle pin. Now what I consider to be the first pin is when you put the plug to the table with the metal connector pins facing up, the first pin is on the left. You can push down the lock of the pin with pliers and then pull out the pin and push it back into the new slot. So let's plug that into the Z end stop slot, which is the lower left one of this group of six end stop slots on the SKR 1.3. Now we can connect the hot end and parts cooling fans. The existing connectors can be reused, but you will have to swap the plus and minus cables. Same method as I've just shown you for the end stop switches, otherwise the fans won't turn. Again, looking down on the plug with the metal connectors facing up, the black minus cable needs to be right and the red plus cable needs to be left. After doing that, the hot end cooling fan, that's the one that's permanently running, is going to this slot left of the first stepper motor connector. The parts cooling fan is going to be plugged into the slot that sits below the first stepper driver. What's left? Yes, I still have to connect my display. I'm going to reuse the ANIT full graphics display I already installed in one of my previous videos. And in another future video, I will show you how to upgrade to the Big Tree Tech color touch display on the SKR mainboard. However, we cannot just plug in the existing cables just like they are. There is some modifications to be done, which are also explained in detail in a guide I found on Thingiverse. I've put that link in the description for your reference. The guide shows that you need to remove the nose of the LCD connector so you can insert it reversed into the EXP1 connector on the SKR mainboard. And additionally, you need to swap the plus and minus pins, so pin one and two, and also pin 9 needs to be connected to the cable of pin 7, while pin 7 is actually left unused. As I said, the detailed explanation is in the guide. This might be the most difficult modification you need to make to get this build done using this kind of display. But with a little soldering and some shrink tube, it can be done in a really clean way. So that modified plug goes into the EXP1 connector reversed, so the red cable is on top. Finally, according to the guide from the J3 connector on the display, I'm just using pin 7 and I'm connecting that to pin 3 on the EXP2 connector on the SKR, just using a jumper wire. That should be it regarding the display connection. Now I'm mounting the mainboard cooling fan and connect it to the same plugs where the power connectors connect to the mainboard. So the electronics installation is complete for today. In the next video, I talk in depth about how I configured the Marlin 2.0 firmware for the SKR 1.3. I've also linked some other videos for you in these two cards here and here. Hope to see you soon on this channel. See you next time. Alexa, studio off.